All right, welcome to 17.3, Volume of a Cone. And in this lesson, you want to learn why the ice cream cone is so prevalent. First of all, let's make sure we can find the volume of a cylinder, right? We said the volume of a cylinder is exactly pi r squared times the height, h. It's approximately 3.14 times the radius of the base. The bottom is called the base, so is the top. The radius of the base here is 4 inches, so it would be 4 squared. And the height straight up between the two is 10. So it's 3.14 times 16 times 10. 16 times 10 is 160. So why don't we do it that way today, just to be different. So 3.14 times 160, we get a row of zeros. We step over. 6 times 4 is 24 and 8 and 18 we step over twice for our third row which is 3 1 and 4 we add up all three rows and i'm getting a 10 there and a 5 and we're moving the decimal twice and so we're getting this is approximately 502.4 that's the symbol for inches so it's cubic inches in that cylinder so hope we all know that's called a cone. So a cone has a circle or a base. You know, you can flip this upside down. That circle is its base. And so, and then it comes to a point there. So to draw a cone, right, you draw an oval best you can. And they're pretty easy to draw. And then you do bring it to a point. All right. So how much ice cream comes in a typical cone? You're actually going to calculate that. Okay, so a cone has a circle for a base, right? This is the, and it, there's the radius of the base, the distance from the middle of the circle to the outside. There's the height straight up to the center from the point. And so that's our height here. And so we're going to find the radius, the area of each of these bases. So the area, right, is pi r squared, no height in the, right? And we're going to use 3.14, it says. And the radius of both of these is 2, so it would be 2 squared or 4. So it's 3.14 times 4 for both. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 is 4 is 1 is 5 is 12 over. And so the area is 12.56 square centimeters for both of these, right? They both have the exact same circle at the top. But how many of these cones would fit in that cylinder? I want you to take a second and make a guess. How many of these cones, now we're going to assume that you can, you know, smush the cones and cram them inside the cylinder. Now, most people guess two or a little more than two. It's actually three. Three of these fit in there. And it doesn't always look that way because of the way you're looking at something in two dimensions, but it's actually three dimensions. So if the volume of this is pi r squared h, and three of these fit in there, what's the formula for volume of a cone? Well, it turns out it's one third of that, right? Because three would fit in. So the volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. So this is the same two that we had. So we said, so we're now doing volume. We're going to do uh, approximately one-third times 3.14 times the radius squared, which was 2 squared, which is 4, now times the height, which is 6, right? So we have approximately one. Oh, we can do a little can canceling here, can't we? So we can cancel the 3 with this 6 and make that a 2, right? Let's take advantage of that. And so with 3.14 right times four we just did that on the last screen right right that was the area of the base and now the volume since we canceled the three with a six we just have to multiply that times two six times two is twelve ten eleven five and two and it's twice as big and it's twenty five point one two twenty five and twelve hundredths cubic centimeters in this cone. For the cylinder, right, 
you don't have the one third. It's 3.14 times two squared times six. So there's no canceling. So we get the same 12.56, but then you have to multiply it not by two, but by six, the height. And six times six is 36 and 33 and 15. And notice this is 75.375. 75.36 cubic centimeters. Three times as much fits in the cylinder. So you should memorize it, right? For the cylinder, it's pi r squared h. Right? Area is pi r squared. When you want to do a cylinder, you add multiplying by h. When you want to do a cone, you add multiply it by one third. We did ones where we left pi in the answer. Right? When you leave by the answer, you get to write the equal sign. In fact, it's the only way you get to write the equal sign. So it's one third, we're leaving pi. The radius here is five, so five squared is 25. And then the height here is nine. Now that's very convenient. To, Mr. Ben has written these, so there's this canceling every time to make it go faster, right? So now we have pi times 25 times three. Well, 25 times three is 75. So we have pi times 75, but we don't write it that way. We're going to say the volume of this cone is 75, exactly 75 times pi. Now, pi is 3 point, a little more than 3. So if you wanted to approximate it, you'd use 3 or 3.14. All right, so once again, these answers are not close to each other. So let's not use 3.14. Let's do volume equals one third. Let's use three for pi. Oh, look at that nice canceling right every time there. Times the radius. Now, 12 is not the radius. What's the radius? Right, 12 is the diameter. The radius of that circle is six times six squared. The height straight up between the tip and the center of the circle is 10. So we get six squared times 10, which is, oops, I should be using approximately. And so it's approximately 360 cubic inches. Well, I don't see that answer here, but I used three, so I'm a little low. Which one's a little higher than that? Oh, 376 cubic inches. Well, let's find the volume of all three of those cones. So it's volume equals, I didn't say what to use, so why don't we use leave pi in our answer? Make our life easy, it doesn't say. So it's three, right? times, I don't need parentheses, times one third times pi times the radius squared times the height. Those cancel. Four squared is 16. So it's pi times 16 times eight. And so it's 16 times eight. Eight times six is 48. And so it's 128 times whatever pi is. That's the same exact thing as if I made a cylinder with the same exact circle on the top and the bottom. And so there we have a cone trapped in a cylinder. And what does the question say? A cone is always one third the size of a cylinder with the same radius and height. That's what we just proved. Write a formula for how much volume is left. All right, so the cylinder, right? The cylinder is pi r squared h. The cone is one third of that, one third pi r squared h. Now, so to find what's left, we're going to subtract the two, right? Well, let's think about this. We have one of something minus one third of something. Well, one is the same as three thirds. So, oops. So, if you have one of something minus one third, what do you have left? Well, you have two thirds. So, the volume of the rest is two-thirds times pi r squared h. That's what it's asking. If you have a whole one minus one-third, it's got to be two-thirds. We're at practice. All right, so that's a little narrower than the, a real cone. A real cone here is like 1.3 or 1.2 inches, but I wanted to make the math easy. So it doesn't say what to do here. So let's use three for pi. Just all right, you could use whatever you want when it says. 
So it says volume of the cone is one third. I'm going to use three for pi times the radius one. Well, that couldn't be easier. One squared is one times the height of six inches. Those cancel. And I'm approximating since I used three for pi. And I'm getting approximately six cubic inches, right? Because this is th this is uh, one one inch squared and this is six inches six cubic inches there's actually a little bit more just so you know there's more than six cubic inches on top there usually that's really a, most of your cone more than half of it is that blob on top so you really want that blob on top to be big when you go to the ice cream store right, so there's that picture we did right we said that the whole thing is pi r squared h, the cylinder. We take away one third of it. And so what do you have left? You have two thirds of it. So it'll be two thirds. We're finding the volume of the space outside the cone in here. So that's two thirds of the space. It doesn't look it. Two thirds times, it says use three for pi. Oh, they're being very, I'm being very nice here, right? Because that'll cancel right out. That's pi times the radius is 4, 4 squared times the height is 10. So we have 2 times 16 times 10. 2 times 16 is 32. So we have 320 approximately cubic centimeters in the space outside the cone. Right? You take away one third from something, you've got two thirds left. All right. Are these answers close to each other? No. So let's use 3 for pi. One third times 3 for pi times the radius squared times the height. Those cancel. We get 25 times 20. Well, 25 times 10 is 250. Or 25, let's do this. 25 times 2 is 50. So 25 times 20 is 500 cubic inches which one is closest to that right because we used three instead of 3.14 we're a little low 525 cubic inches all right so which one would you rather have three level so no blob on top ice cream cones or the cylinder there well they have the exact same circle at the top so they have the exact same base with a radius of one square one inch the exact same height and these are the same so it's the same amount of ice cream so your preference is do you like the taste of cones or you don't like the taste of cones but this is a lesson of people who would say i never use math in my real life well the store owner at every ice cream store is using math every day on you right because when you go to an ice cream store they always sell you in cones when you are paying per uh, one cone. But notice what happens at those yogurt places. At the yogurt places, they don't have cones. They have cylinders because they want it that cylinder, they want you to fill up that cylinder and pay more because you buy more. So when they want you to put more ice cream or yogurt in the cylinder, in the whatever the holder, I guess I should call it, they use a cylinder. But when they want to sell you something that looks big because they put this big blob on top, they use a cone. They are using math every single day in their store.